Hello and welcome. We've reached the sixth round of the HSBC UK National Road Series. This week the riders compete in the Bowman Trophy, part of the Cyclone Festival of Cycling. It's one of the most well-known races in the United Kingdom. The last round of the series was the two-day tour of the reservoir. On day one, Ollie Wood of Canyon DHB sprinted for the line to take the victory. And on stage two, it was James Shaw of Swift Carbon who took the win and with it, the overall classification. After some great racing in round five, this is how the series standings look with Matt Holmes, James Shaw and Ian Bibby in the top three positions. Amongst the teams, it's Canyon DHB, head of Madison Genesis and Swift Carbon Pro Cycling. And in the race for qualification for the Tour of Britain, Canyon DHB, Madison Genesis, Swift Carbon and Team Wiggins Lacolle in good shape at the moment. This year's HSBC UK National Road Series is made up of 10 races across the country. At each round, there are 30 points up for grabs for the winner. The rider with the most points at the end of the series wins the crown. It's as simple as that. The village of Stamfordham in Northumberland hosts the Bowman Trophy for the 49th time and the Curlew Cup for the seventh year, part of the Cyclone Festival of Cycling. Stamfordham has a rich history in cycling, most recently hosting the National Road Championships in 2018, which saw Connor Swift and Jess Roberts ride to their striped victory. The village itself dates back to 1188 and is littered with listed buildings, including a grade two village jail. Let's hope the riders all behave themselves today. So let's take a look at the course for today's race. The riders will complete two laps of a smaller 22 and a half kilometer loop and four laps of a larger 35 kilometer circuit, which will also be used in the women's race with a total distance of 187 kilometers, including four ascents of the Riles climb. This is sure to be an exciting race. Not too nervous, so it's not really a, a good course for me, so the pressure's not really on me. Um, probably John Dibbon's our best hope for this sort of finish. Um, he's been going, climbing quite well, so depending what happens, I'll hopefully try and st stay close to the front and keep my jersey. It's easy for like a small breakaway to, to get away here, so we want to make sure we have numbers in anything that's, that's going out the road. And then um, if it comes back to a finish, then, um, you know, Bostock and I will be, um, you know, ready, ready and waiting to, to, to have a go at that. Always a good race, so uh, the Riles is pretty decisive. Um, it's a bit of a headwind today, so it might make it a, a bit of a bigger group, but um, I think we're just going to make it make it really hard. So all set to go for the sixth round of the National Road Series, the Bowman Trophy, the 49th edition is underway. Matt Holmes, the series leader at the front of the peloton and we're up in the bumper as all the riders want to stay as close to the front as possible. Joan Alley just rolling up for Team Inspired and everybody is anxious about what awaits. We've got the short lap of 22 and a bit kilometers followed by four times around the uh, fabled 35 and a half kilometer circuit uh, with the four ascents of the Riles facing them. The flag is in and we're underway and the early attacks are going to be uh, instructive and meaningful and who fancies getting up the road early? Yeah, there's been a lot of action already as we see this small group now coming together with these four riders here. Great to see young Thomas Mayen in here, who's obviously more of a cyclocross rider, but now he's obviously in that pre-season prep for this upcoming cyclocross series. Yes, uh, Thomas Mayen is in the yellow uh, jersey there of the Tartaletto Isarex. He's based in Belgium, but he's got to give best on this occasion up the Riles to Isaac Monday, who scores the top points in the prestigious King of the Mountains competition. And... Uh, Third across the line, Jordan Peacock is also in here, as indeed have we got uh, Rob Scott from the uh, Team Wiggins Look Hall squad. Yeah, you can see Rob Scott there just looking over his shoulder, letting the two riders at the front take those points at the top. He's more in there for the long game, I reckon, Declan. So be interesting to see what happens over the top here if they get back together or if these two try and press on. Second time up the climb, and once again, extending his advantage, it's Isaac Monday from the Richardson's Trek Racing Team, the 24-year-old rider who's clearly targeted this one. Unfortunately, though, an incident on the course has forced the commissars and the race organisers to stop the race. They're going to try and reset and uh, give these four riders the advantage that they had, but they just needed to make a little bit of a, a readjustment uh, following an incident with a tractor out on the course. Yeah, it looks like they got organised pretty quickly now, but the un unfortunately the aspect of having that stop in the middle of the race, though, Declan, is that sometimes your legs just totally seize up and potentially this is what's happening at the back right now. Yeah, jo Jordan Peacock's not enjoying this too much and each of these ascents is taking its toll. One and a half kilometres in length, 4.7% uh, if you take the average over one and a half kilometres and it gets up over 16%. So this is a grippy and tough climb, but Isaac Monday is making light work of it. 
the thing is with this climb of the rails is that you can see it literally right in front of you from about two kilometers away and it just looks like a road going up into the sky but that average 4.7 percent definitely does not do this climb justice Isaac Monday charging along on the front in the orange colours of the uh, Richardson's Trek Racing team, the, the much travelled rider. He's uh, switched teams lately and clearly has a point to prove. And he's looking for a little bit of assistance over the top of this climb, but he's certainly making those other riders work in there. Yeah, he's going incredibly strong today. He's very, very active, and now he's pretty much taking a full sweep of all the points in the King of the Mountains. As we now see, this group at the front is starting to slowly fall apart. Peacock has been dropped, and you could see that one coming. It's been a brave effort, an impressive effort from the Spirit to Fossey rider. He'll get some encouragement, but uh, he's heading back into the sanctuary, such as it is, of the peloton. A little shake of the head. It's been a tough day out for him. Yeah, you can just see, as we were looking there at the pitches on Monday, just how grippy the surface is on this course here. It's very, very rolly, and of course, if you, even if you take the rails out of the equation, this is just a really tough day in this saddle for all of these riders. Pretty bumpy roads. Not necessarily main roads either, so there's loads of changes of surface. So it's really about, you know, trying to take care of yourself, look after yourself, drink plenty, especially on a warm day like today, and more importantly, get some food down your neck. Yeah, and that's uh, the job for Jordan Peacock. He's had a little bit of time to watch and wait as the peloton arrives, and it's the Vitas Pro Cycling squad on the front en masse that are chasing down the uh, three riders still left up front. One minute and eight seconds, the advantage as things currently stand, and things are starting to crack a little bit as Rob Scott has gone for glory, and this is causing uh, Thomas Mean his place at the front, but he's He's working incredibly hard just to stay there, and you can see the summit is about to be crested. Yeah, it's a great ride by me, and today, even to just be in this company in the UK, it's the domestic scene is so strong in the UK right now. It's great to see these young riders coming from you know different disciplines. Me and me, and predominantly a cyclocross rider, but the previous few laps up here, Rob Scott has just sat back and let Isaac Monday take the points. But now you can see just how strong Rob Scott is today. So the final ascent of the Riles goes on this occasion to Rob Scott's useful points taken by Isaac Monday. He'll be the king of the mountains in uh, this year's Bowman Trophy. But now uh, the objective is to see how uh, much longer they can stay out front. Can they possibly convert their advantage into a winning one? Yeah, Scott, they're just showing how strong he is today. And now, obviously, Mian, they've also looked around their, over their shoulders and seen that Mian was still within touching distance. Three riders in this situation is always going to be better than two, and it's always good to have an extra pair of legs just to pull you along this road. Monday confirmed as the King of the Mountains as Mean arrives back in, the man from Derwent side. The cyclocross expert is uh, useful legs to have as Rob Scott is certainly charging along. He's just 20 years of age, the man from Team Wiggins, Lacal, and he is a rider with a big future, third year on the team. Mean is uh, having to work his way back in again. Every one of these little rollers is costing him. Thomas Mean is a rider we don't generally see very often in, in, in this discipline in the UK, but we have to remember he's part of this new wave of the British cyclocross riders, along with Tom Pidcock, along with Ben Turner, who are now stepping up on the world stage. And we can see now at the front of Peloton, Ribble Pro Cycling are giving it full tilt. Yeah, the uh, Ribble squad have uh, clearly set the agenda. Just over 30 kilometres to go now for these three up front. And Monday doesn't want to give in just yet. He's going to ride this one right the way to the point where they're uh, retained by the peloton but that's inevitable now and the composition of the group behind has changed a little bit hasn't it the attacks are starting to come a little anxious look over the shoulder from thomas mean as he realizes their time out front is uh, is about to come to an end it's been a brave resistance been a useful one i think for rob scott and the team wiggins lacolle squad they've had an armchair ride yeah absolutely can we just look down the road there it's the it's the orange and the racing green jersey of st perrion coming to the front there I don't think that is Stephen Lamp here, but it look, could potentially be Joe Evans, I think, there. We can just get a little bit of a beard on Joe. Looks a little bit cat weasel, to be honest. So the St. Piran squad have been very active in the rounds to this point in the series, and they clearly want to continue as they have uh, gone to this point. But now we've got a little bit of a, a reset at the front, and it looks uh, very much as if Damien Clayton is, is making a bit of a name for himself of late. The Andy Moore uh, Auto Centres rider goes to the front of this group. He's got Mark Christian for company, and what about Dan Bigham on the front of this uh, trio here in the dark colours of the Ribble Pro Cycling team? Clayton has been a bit of a revelation, to be honest with you, Declan. He's been really, really strong. He's been present in pretty much the front half of every one of these, uh, the, the National Series. And he's not scared of these bigger teams. He's always getting involved. And you can see by the look of him, he's a strapping young lad, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, made a real name for himself uh, this year as the riders head out on their final lap. Just over 22 kilometres of racing remaining in the 2019 edition of the Bowman Trophy. 
First edition back in 1952, won by Stan Blair, and who's going to etch their name on this venerable uh, venerable trophy th today? Well, Clayton would certainly like to do it. He rolls to the front. There's a couple more riders coming over. These two guys are very, very dangerous. If, if um, Williams and Townsend get across to this front group, this is going to be an incredibly strong group. You can see Townsend's not getting any help from Williams. Decides to throw it in the gutter and try and jump him, but Williams, he's a wily dog, is Pete Williams. He's been a former winner of this race just a few years ago, and you know what? If these two get across to this first three, this is going to be a really good group of five. Really, really strong riders, and a lot of different teams represented in here. Yeah, Pete Williams, his dossard uh, reflects his age in actual fact. He's the oldest rider in this group at 32 years of age. Rory Townsend is a man with a big future. He's had a string of top results in UCI racing of late. Fourth in the Irish National Road Race Championships in Derry last week. And uh, three World Tour riders ahead of him in that one. So he's, he's on a rich seam of form. He's won in this series already. And he clearly wants to see what he can do about that. As Pete Williams just finishes it off and brings them up front, we've now got five riders clear of the field on the final. 22 kilometer lap of this Bowman Trophy. We can see though that Bigham's really keen to keep it rolling as another Rebel Pro Cycling and another Canyon DHB Blue Homes rider comes across. It looks like Callum McLean along with John Archibald just syncing up here. This will be seven riders in the front and this is a very, very dangerous break. You do not want any of these riders to go up the road, but they have to get organised, and they have to get organised really, really quickly because obviously the bunch is breathing down their neck and we're running out of time. Every single time they look over their shoulders, they're going to slow down. Every time they talk to each other, they're going to slow down. They just need to get on with the job at hand. So Dan Bigham tows them along and tries to give John Archibald a little bit of a rest. They're looking in good shape inside the final 20 kilometres. St. Piran is the patron saint of Cornwall, so we wanted uh, basically an acornish team, but Cornwall being on the, you know, the edge of the UK, we don't have many races, don't have many riders, so it's about developing Cornish talent ultimately. Riding with Lamps, I think he's kind of instilled that in all of us, is that like we're here to compete, we're here to race. The change I've noticed in myself is just being a lot more confident in the bunches, uh, a lot more confident in these fields and not being too intimidated by Anything else? Having Steve's knowledge and background, that's what was uh, was the attractive sort of feature for me. He sort of put everything that he's learned from racing, you know, from most of the top UK teams. Uh, he's kind of collated all that together, and, and from it developed St. Piran. It's been a lot of work. It's quite stressful at times, but it's really rewarding when all the young riders do, you know, do really well and you know get out get out there and out there in the races. Just over 15 kilometers remaining in the Bowman Trophy and seven riders clear of the field with an advantage just north of 20 seconds. It's still finally poised. Rory Townsend on the front for the Canyon DHB uh, uh, presented by Bloor Homes to give them their full title squad and they have uh, two riders in this move and that's good news for them. Callum McLeod also there for the Canyon squad and indeed uh, the Ribble Pro Cycling team have uh, Dan Bigham who winches along. He's a three-time national champion. He's won at World Cup level on the track as well. He's somewhat disgruntled about recent decisions from the UCI so he's uh, going to see what he can do in the company of his teammate John Archibald, number 17. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a very, uh, very handsome group we've got here, to be honest with you. These are very, very strong riders, and this is going to be a real headache back at the bunch for teams like Vitus Pro Cycling. They need to be on the front now. They need to be pulling this back, but the firepower in this breakaway right now, Declan, is very, very impressive. Yeah, they're all riding well. It's a well-oiled machine at the moment. As, uh, Pete Williams just scrolls to the back of the field, number 32, for the uh, Swift Carbon uh, Pro Cycling team. And on the back, as things currently stand, is uh, young Callum McLeod from the Canyon DHB squad. So how are they going to play it? How are the two teams are going to work things out? There's a man who was up the road earlier on. Rob Scott is uh, feeling the pinch a little bit. As you might expect, fully 187 kilometres for the riders today. And they've well over 170 kilometres in their legs at this point. I think that's just indicative of what we spoke about just before the break. There was, it, these roads are very, very heavy, and it's, it's relentless, this course, although it looks right now it's nice and easy and flat. It is very, very rolly, and the road surface is very, very heavy on your legs, and that takes its toll after a, a, you know two or three laps of this. But these guys have now got the best part of 150k plus in their legs right now, so there's going to be cracks appearing left, right, and centre. 
Yeah, a lot of tired legs in that uh, chase group behind. It's relatively large in number, but how many riders are able to make any worthwhile contribution? These have shown themselves to be the strong men, but it is uh, finally poised. 14 kilometers remaining, just 12 uh, seconds the advantage. You wouldn't uh, put big money on their chances of staying out front at the moment. Mark Christian just uh, rolls to the back of the group for Team Wiggins Lacol, so they're unlikely to be chasing behind. No, not at all. And I tell you what, Callum McLeod's going to have to do a massive amount of work here because the fastest man in this group is going to be between Rory Townsend, I reckon, and Pete Williams for this group sprint. So they have to really, really press on. Townsend has to use his teammate in this situation, give himself a chance to get those legs loose, get ready for this group kick because they need to maintain this gap. And now with 10k to go, it's only going to get more tempting for riders to sit on in that front move. Inside the final 10 kilometers and the bunch large in size is within touching distance of the group of seven up front. Can they possibly hang on? Well, they're continuing to believe and they have the uh, the strength there. Rory Townsend himself contributing here. He is uh, the man with the big sprint reputation. As I said, he's got a string of top results in UCI racing of late and uh, he wants to try and show that sprint. Uh, he's sitting on the front. Well rolling along at the front and rolling along at the back at the moment is uh, Damien Clayton. I think he's benefiting from the fact that there are a couple of teams with more than one rider in here. Yeah, he's using his head here for sure. Uh, he's, he's there. He's a, he's a rider not from a bigger team, so he's got the, the luxury of sitting on the back here. And you know what? He's the kind of person I would not like to be left sitting on the back. He looks like he's got the kind of stature rider who could go real early just here to see Mark Christian over the top. There's a little gap left there in the line by Dan Bigham. Yeah, Dan Bigham just uh, making sure that everybody rolls through and Mark Christian immediately, as indeed uh, Pete Williams in the uh, white and blue colours just behind him, really recognising that perhaps they uh, needed to just uh, close that gap. So, well, who's next? Are they going to roll up? Are they going to all contribute here? Are they going to leave it up to the other teams? Three kilometres to go. Yeah, you can just see the Rory Townsend just get himself psyched up for this finish. We've got three Ks now into this finish in Stamford. Just bit a little bit of excess weight off his bike, poured the water out of the water bottle, threw the bottle away to a, a, a spectator at the side of the road. But again, Clayton, ice cold, sitting at the back. And there we see the experience there of Pete Williams just leaving the gap, forcing Townsend in front, because everyone knows Townsend's the fastest man in this move. If anyone's going to win this from a bunch kick, he's very astute and he's very, very good tactically. He's going to follow on, but he wants to make sure he crosses this line first today. But Williams, straight on the back of him, and Clayton again, armchair ride. Yeah, he's uh, watching and uh, watching with great interest this great work being done by John Archibald uh, on the front, the man from Edinburgh in Scotland, 28 years of age, just behind him a 19-year-old who's uh, making a name for himself today, and he's working uh, for the, uh, he's working for Rory Townsend, number seven, a little bit further back. Uh, similarly, Archibald, his uh, clearly. His efforts are all to try and assist number 18. That's his, his teammate uh, from the Ribble Pro Cycling squad, Dan Bigham. For my money now, I think Ribble Pro Cycling should be trying to attack one at a time because they're not going to win this race from the sprint. They have to now start firing each. Both riders have to have take turns to get up the road. We've got roughly two kilometres now to the finish, so less than four minutes of racing here as McLeod gets back on the front here and he knows the bunch is breathing down their necks right now. 2K to go. Townsend looking a little bit nervous. He knows Williams is, you know, one of the faster riders in this group. He just has to make sure he's got clean air in front of him for the sprint and he does not get boxed in. Well, impressive stuff by Callum McLeod and indeed by uh, John Archibald as they swap turns at the front. Everyone else watches with interest. Mark Christian is going to be feeling the heat on the back of his neck. The man in the red colours uh, from the Wiggle the Call squad as uh, Dan Bigham next up rolling that huge gear, sitting on the tops. And Rory Townsend has clearly picked his wheel as the one to watch. Pete Williams in turn also watching with interest in the white and blue colours as Damien Clayton of Andy Moore Auto Centres uh, rolls along at the back. I tell you what, though, at the front of this move, the two riders at the front, John Archibald and young Cal McLeod, have been doing such a fantastic job here. They know that the bunch is breathing down their necks, and now the guys just sitting behind them, mainly Mark Christian, followed by Dan Bigham, they are the guys who are probably going to have to hit out quite early. Townsend knows this, so he's sliding on the back of, of uh, Mark Christian here, and Christian's usually good for an attack with about 1k to go. Past the kite, less than 1,000 metres, and this has been a great job of work by John Archibald. Here comes the attack, going for a long one. Dan Bigham has been set up and primed absolutely perfectly by John Archibald, and he's gone for the long one, but uh, Rory Townsend is all over that one. So too Pete Williams. A little bit of a crack there developing in the group as Mark Christian looks for a little bit of help, and Clayton's not going to give it to him. He's going to gamble that Christian's going to get up to them, but it's three clear inside 500 metres to go. I tell you what, Townsend and Williams are being cool as ice here showing their experience they're letting Bigham do what he wants to do 
But I tell you what, they're not going to come round him till 500 or less metres to go now because the only way they're going to win this now, it looks like it's going to be a two horse race between Williams and Townsend. Yeah, and the break look like they're going to hang on clear of the bunch. Meanwhile, uh, Bigham is riding to try and at least preserve a top three because Rory Townsend and Pete Williams are waiting to pounce. And Mark Christian is crawling all over the bike to get back on in time for the sprint. But we're back into the village of Stamford. Um, and here comes Rory Townsend. He unleashes. He goes for the long one. Pete Williams in his wheel. Is he going to be able to come over the top of him? It's Rory Townsend out of the saddle, pumping those legs and going clear of the field. And he won't be denied. He's going to hang on to take his... Third victory of the series. So glory for the Canyon Pro Cycling Team. They get uh, the victory, but uh, behind the sprint for eighth place is hotly contested. It's a large group, and the uh, Team Inspired squad have riders in abundance close to the front. Joan Alley in the mix, and uh, Tom Pitcock looked as if he was there or thereabouts. This the battle for eighth on the line, and it's uh, Tom Pitcock that just about manages to get up out of uh, Joan Alley. And Brown in 10th place. But no denying the man who got the victory. Beautifully converted. Yeah, he went extremely early because he was just hanging on. But fortunately for him, this uh, finishing straight slightly downhill as we look there in the third place. Great to see Clayton there stepping on at the bottom of that podium. So Rory Townsend gets the victory ahead of uh, Pete Williams and Damien Clayton. Uh, Bigham, McLeod, Archibald and Christian all scoring from the break. Yeah, really happy. Yeah, I was... That's my third one now, so I'm absolutely loving the series. Um, and, uh, yeah, just just really happy with how everything's going. So, obviously, the team's so strong um, that uh, it makes it a lot easier for me, really. The sprint itself was was really it was actually really hard. Um, obviously, Pete's a fantastic like, competitor. He's won this race before as well. So, I was uh, concerned about him coming into the finish, and I didn't sprint very well, but I, I thought if I was going to be first onto that, small bit of downhill coming into the line if i was first into the out likelihood was I was probably going to take it so so on the series standings the top two remain unchanged with matt holmes on top but rory townsend has moved up from eighth to third and in the team standings it's still canyon dhb on top ahead of madison genesis and in the race for Tour of Britain selection, it's still Canyon DHB on top ahead of Madison Genesis, Swift Carbon and Team Wiggins Lacalf. What a great day of racing here at the Bowman Trophy and what a win for Rory Townsend. The next round is on Sunday 14th of July at the Stockton Grand Prix. Come and join us at the roadside for it or join us for the highlights. To stay in touch with the HSBC UK National Road Series and everything else in the world of cycling, go to britishcycling.org.uk, hashtag National Road Series. Bye for now and see you next time.